What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Fox 43 Podcast Studio, talking high school football with our Frenzy 5 Games to Watch. I'm Andrew Kliss alongside Keith Schwagert, Fox 43 digital writer extraordinaire. Keith, you cover everything, but we love it when you cover high school football, and that's what we are talking about. The postseason here for District 3, and we're going to start with our Frenzy Game of the Week. Garden Spot, having a great year, bouncing back for... After some tough couple of seasons, seven and three on the road at Dover, eight and two. Yeah, this should be a really good matchup. Two two really good offenses here. I'm expecting to see uh, quite a bit of scoring actually, because both these teams can move it up and down the field pretty quickly. Uh, Garden Spot uh, coming off a 35-20 loss to Solanco last week that snapped their uh, three game winning streak and uh, dropped them into a three way tie for second place in Section 3 of the Lancaster-Lebanon League, but didn't really affect their playoff standing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they get a good matchup here. Uh, player to watch for Garden Spot, uh, Kai Harding, their quarterback. He was real good this year, real solid and a, a, a dual threat. 1,737 passing yards, 19 touchdowns, and he also rushed for 1,000 yards, uh, 1,076 to be exact, and scored 12 times on the ground. So he's a player that you're definitely going to have to focus on if you're Dover. Uh, the Eagles, uh, runners up to uh, New Oxford in Division Two of the York Adams League. Uh, they, they had a, a, a solid season as well. One of the better offenses in the, uh, York Adams league, uh, finished number two in total offense, 395 yards per game on average. So they're going to be tough to t- stop as well. Eric Campbell, their quarterback, uh, had a league high 2033 passing yards and he was third in the league in touchdown passes with 18. So a battle of two really good quarterbacks in this one should be a great game. It should be, and hats off to Dover. Dover, you know, they've been down recently as well, so they've had a they had a great great year right there. Our other game, one of our other games to watch, maybe, and this is frenzy worthy. We know this because it was our frenzy game of the week in week one. Cedar Cliff at Shippensburg. This is the third time they are meeting in the last two years. Last year, Cedar Cliff knocked off an unbeaten Shippensburg team to start the year. We were, I was there. Crazy game. There was a weather delay. There was a lockdown in the in the town of Shippensburg. Shippensburg was an hour late getting there. They ended up getting the win. Uh, I ended up going up to Coach Gillen afterwards because I thought the game was uh, over and it wasn't. So I was like, hey, do you want to talk before going to lock? Absolutely not, he said to me. So yeah, crazy game out there. As you can see, Cedar Cliff, Shippensburg. It's one of the premier games in the area this week. Yeah, as you pointed out, Shippensburg won the uh, opener this year, 28-10. So uh, Cedar Cliff going to be looking for a little bit of revenge in this one. Uh, they really turned it on in the second half of the season. They were 2-3 and three at the halfway point, uh, put together a five-game mm-hmm. winning streak to close things out. Uh, so they're coming into the playoffs with some momentum. Uh, they've got a good quarter quarterback uh sophomore Bennett Seacrest uh 1200 passing yards 17 touchdowns this year uh and Cedar Cliff you know they have a pretty storied playoff history this is their 17th appearance uh they have a 14 and 13 overall record and uh three and three and six championship game appearances so they have a little bit more of a rich uh history in the playoffs than uh Shippensburg does although Shippensburg has had more success recently uh this year they finished third in mid-pen colonial uh Got knocked off last week, 42-36 to Greencastle Antrim. So they're uh, they're kind of coming into the playoffs feeling a little bit surly, I would imagine. Uh, th- they've got a, a, a good player in Tucker Chamberlain, uh, the leader of their offense. Uh, 1,200 passing yards. Uh, Trevon Keller, their running back, uh, 898 rushing yards, five touchdowns. So a uh, bit of a balanced attack for Shippensburg. Again, should be a good matchup. As I said, Cedar Cliff probably coming into this one looking for a little bit of revenge and maybe with a little bit more momentum uh, than Shippensburg has. So we'll see if they're able to, to turn it on here in the rematch. The guys you mentioned, Chamberlain, Weller, and Cater, they had big games. I think it was Cater that had like an 86-yard interception return in week one against Cedar Cliff. And that kind of got, that jumped them out to a 14 point lead right off the bat. So yeah, that was a wild one. And I mentioned the weather. There was also fireworks going off when the, the game originally got like suspended at one point. Coach Faust was everything. like, this is what we're talking about. Like, it was just crazy. So that should be a good one. Cocalico at Elizabethtown. Cocalico six and four. E-Town, great year. One of those losses, by the way, to Garden Spot. 
The Bears 8-2 and two on the year. Yeah, and this is the third matchup we're talking about in the uh, District 3 uh, Class 5A playoffs. I should point that out. Uh, the top four teams all received first-round buys, so the winner of this Cocalico E-Town game uh, moves on to take on uh, Gettysburg in the quarterfinals. Uh, so, you know, this should be a pretty good matchup. Two Lancaster Lebanon League teams, mm-hmm. very familiar with one another. They used to be in the same section for, for a couple of years. Uh, Cocalico, this year they're down in Section 4. Uh, they finished third place in the section race. Uh, they won their last three games to get the the final uh, playoff berth in 5A. And they're an interesting team. All four of their losses came against playoff qualifiers this year. They lost to Solanco. They lost to Mannheim Central. They lost to Lampeter Strasburg. And they lost to Wyoming. Missing four teams that you can absolutely uh, feel no shame in losing nope. to. All, all of those programs very strong this year. Uh, Cocalico, of course, they love to run the ball. That's what they've been doing for years and years and years. Uh, they've got a good running back, Sam Steffi. Uh, 1,128 yards, 15 touchdowns on the ground. He's the guy you really have to watch, but, you know, with Cocalico, anybody can carry the ball. They have five or six guys that have logged at least, you know, 30 carries this year. So uh, kind of a tough team to stop. Speaking of tough teams to stop, let's look at Elizabethtown. Man, they are uh, they put up a bunch of crazy numbers this year. Led the league in total offense. They're averaging 458 yards per game. Good quarterback in Josh Rudy, 2,733 yards and 26 touchdowns this, this year. He led the Yellow League in passing. Uh, their, running, uh, their wide receiver, Braden Cummings, had a league-high 61 catches, 1,493 yards, uh, 17 scores. And they even have a good running back, Logan Lentz. He, he broke 1,000 yards in the regular season, scored 15 times. So they can, do, they can damage you in a lot of different ways, and it'll be interesting to see how the Cocalico defense uh, figures out a way to slow them down. The best way to slow them down might be to do what they do on offense and just control the clock with that ground game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's Cocalico's goes M.O. over the last couple of years. And, you know, talking about uh, Elizabethtown rising up, Coach Keith Soak's doing a great job there. Another game that we have pinpointed, Schuylkill Valley 6-4 and four at West Perry 9-1. and one. West Perry was 9-0. and oh. They lost to Steel High uh, last week to close their season. So, But they get a home game. That's always important in the first round of the playoffs, especially when you're going up against an opponent you're not too familiar with. Schuylkill Valley playing in, obviously, the LL, but they're out of Burks up yeah. until this year. Yeah, and this is the uh, District 3 uh, 3A quarterfinal. The winner of this one gets Lancaster Catholic, uh, the number two seed. They went 10 and 0 in the regular season, and uh, they're idle this week. They got to buy through the first round. So yeah, Schuylkill Valley, uh, three way tie for second in uh, Section Five of the Lancaster Lebanon League, and they're coming off a 44 41 loss to Lancaster Catholic in Week 10. Uh, they also dropped a. Uh, Blowout loss to Anvil Cleona in Week Nine, so they're kind of coming into the playoffs on a bit of a down note. They're they got to figure yeah. out a way to uh, to right the ship here. Uh, the, the interesting thing about them, they're coached by former Lancaster Catholic coach Bruce Harbach, who uh, won a bunch of district titles and two state titles at Lancaster Catholic, and is trying to turn around this program. Uh, Schuylkill Valley, this is their first playoff appearance since. 2014. So this is kind of rarefied air for them, and we'll see how they react to it. And West Perry, as you pointed out, they lost to Steel High last week. No shame there. They actually gave the Rollers a bit of a battle. It, it, Steel High mm-hmm. jumped out early, but uh, West Perry kept plugging away at them. Uh, so I, I would say they're probably uh, feeling like they're pretty fine-tuned and ready to go in, here in the playoffs. Uh, real good offense for, for West Perry. Marcus Quaker, their quarterback, uh, was second in the mid-pen in passing this year, 1,960 yards. And uh, was third in touchdown passes. He had 21 this year. He also is a really effective runner. 962 yards and 20 scores on the ground. So he's definitely a player that you're going to have to watch for Schuylkill Valley. Uh, West Perry also has a good receiver. Ian Goodling, 64 catches, 1,182 yards and 15 touchdowns. All of those led the Mid-Pen Conference this year. And when you think of some of the great players capable of putting Mm -hmm. up big numbers in the Mid-Pen, that's pretty impressive uh, for Goodling. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this one uh, uh, shakes out. I think it's going to be a challenge for Schuylkill Valley to slow down that West Perry offense. But, you know, crazy things have happened in the playoffs. You never know. I think this game's big for both programs in general. You know, West Perry, their last playoff win, as, as, as your notes point out, 2018. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's been a while for some of these programs. Google Valley, I mean, I don't recall since I've been in this area, Google Valley, you know, making playoff runs. So, right. I mean, I think this is a big measuring stick for both programs on where they want to be, especially for Coach Har- uh, Harbach, you know, coming back into the, into the coaching profession, trying to build a program. Trinity and DeLone. 
This one was a frenzy game of the week. I believe it started the season either last year or yep. the year before COVID. It's hard to keep track, actually, what was going on, <laughs> who was in stands, things like that. Uh, but Jordan Hill's first win as head coach at Trinity was against the lone Catholic. Here they match up in the playoffs in the District 3 2A semifinal. Trinity to Shamrock 6-4. and Kind of caught fire there in the middle of the season. The lone Catholic, they, after starting 0-3, they kind of ran, they ran the table all the way through the York Adams. Yeah, uh, Trinity, as you mentioned, they started out 1-3. and three. They won five of their last six, and the only loss was to Steel High. And they actually gave the Rollers a battle there, 35-28 in overtime. That was a Thursday night game, a real good game there. So, that you know, they, they got to be feeling pretty good about mm-hmm. themselves coming into the playoffs. Uh, they love to run the ball. Uh, they got two good uh, – Running backs and Messiah Mickens and Max uh, Schlager, who have pretty much evenly divided uh, the carries this year, both of them right around 500, 550 yards uh, rushing, uh, more than a dozen touchdowns between the two of them. So they're going to be tough for DeLone to stop. Uh, of course, we should point out that these teams that know each other, they, they, they played do. in the opener. Uh, Trinity won that one 35 7. That was their one win in the one and three start. Uh, and DeLone. Kind of similar, really, as you mentioned, turned the team around. They ran the table in uh, once they got into Division Three play in the York Adams League. So uh, coming in here uh, to the playoffs on a seven-game winning streak, that's one of the hotter teams in any bracket in, in districts here. So, uh, yeah, this, this should be a pretty good matchup in the rematch. Uh, DeLone, uh, they were second among all York Adams teams. They love to run the ball. 221 rushing yards per game. That ranks second. Uh, you know, they got a good running back in uh, Brady Dettenburn, who had just broke the 1,000-yard uh, plateau last week, uh, uh, 1,030 yards. He found the end zone 11 times. So he's the guy you're really going to want to stop. But Denver Ostrom, no slouch. You know, he has 1,000 passing yards, 13 touchdowns this season. So they kind of mix in a little bit of the pass game there. But really, I think if, they're, if the game's going the way they want, they're going to be running the ball. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how, we'll see how it works out. You got Trinity's ground game against Delone's a little more diversified attack should be an interesting matchup. Two teams that have a bit of a playoff history, you know, Delone, obviously mm-hmm. a, a lot of championships and everything. Uh, Trinity, they're in the playoffs for the first time in 10 years, uh, but it's their 10th overall appearance. So as a pro as programs go two of the more storied, small school programs in the district tangling here in the semifinals. And that's what coach Hill has been trying to do up there with the Shamrocks is just build that program back up because when he took the job they uh yeah i believe it was a winless season yeah. the the year before so good for him folks if you see me yawn if i'm caught on camera yawning or anything the world series is going <laughs> on right now i'm not sure if you're aware philadelphia phillies baseball broad street bombers so it's been a couple of late nights so if you catch me yawning or you see me outside yawning at any of the games that is why it's not that i'm not excited i'm very excited for high school football playoffs as well keith are you Oh, absolutely. I, yeah, this is my favorite time of the year. You got high school postseason going on. Uh, we're not used to having the Phillies in the World Series. So no. like you, I'll, I'm, I'm kind of burning the midnight oil this yeah, week. Yeah, exactly. It's a great time you got, you got to take a while to come down off the yeah. games. You just can't go to bed or you're just staring at the ceiling. So Amen. it is an exciting time. Can't wait for more. I mean, there's a couple rivalries here this week in the district playoffs as we get going on in the 6A rival. I mean, Central York and York. It just comes into rivalry central basically in the playoffs. So can't wait for that. For Keith Schweiger, I'm Andrew Glissa. Thanks for watching this week's edition of the Postseason Frenzy 5.